guys and welcome to this new video. So this video today is a fairly poor, not very well put together video of how you install a PD-130 or more formally known as a Cupra R intercooler on your 136, 140, 163 HGI engine. So this video is going to be a very rough, and I mean this very rough, guide and of how you install this where you get the parts from, how much it costs, and everything else involved. So guys, I do apologize about this video. Um, I was, it was a long day for me. Um, we were having a few fitting problems, just having GoPro battery problems as well. So the video is a bit fast and precise, um, but it'll run you through exactly how to install this intercooler onto your vehicle. Now, be warned, before you even watch this video, and I know you're all gonna comment on it, that this intercooler, that's on my car right now, by the way, that I've done 200 miles on. And I have put on another car as well, the same setup. Is currently held on by cable ties and nuts and bolts, okay? So I'm not saying that there is a, this is the best way, because it certainly isn't, and there would be a more efficient way, but I am showing you guys the, the bare basics um, of exactly how to install this in the cooler. All right, guys, so I'm enjoying a glorious summer's day wearing surgical gloves and a pair of prison-looking overalls. I'm not as bad to go and commit any heinous crimes or murders or go and jump onto a crime scene. I'm actually here today to do a video, and I'm very over-prepared for the job, as you always should be. So what we're doing today is we are doing a intercooler install, a large intercooler install on a 308cc, but this, also, this video also um, applies to the 308, the 308SW, the 308cc obviously um, and it's actually also applicable to all of the other 136 hdi models or actually all the diesel models where you have the intercooler fixated on the right hand side passenger side of the car so rcz's 308's uh 207's although some of the bits on the front end are slightly different but at least this will cover you for rcz's and 308's without a doubt um so we're going to get cracking on um, but the first thing we're going to do is obviously take wheels off, jack the car up, all that sort of thing. But we're going to take you through the steps, so let's get it done. So for this install, you're going to want a PD-130 slash Cupra R twin pass in the cooler. So you guys need four 90 bends, and I'm doing mine at 63 mil. Two straights at 63 mil. We then need, or I have bought, 15 Jubilee clips. This isn't a big boost build. Um, we are going to be going to stage two, but it's not going to be requiring too much boost. So I'm going for double clamps on the cooler and then single jubilees all the way through. So 15 of those. Uh, and then to add to that here, uh, I have got six metal couplers to join the inner cooler parts together. And that should be all you need to do it. So let's go and get this stuff on the car. So there we are, guys. If you have alloy covers, remove them. I pulled the alloy cap covers out. I've loosened these and I'm now going to gun them off. Once you jack the car up, so obviously get your wheels ready to go, get your car jacked, get your wheels off. So once your wheels are off, we're going to remove these four little tabs with a flathead. So there's one either side of the bumper, and these are a T15. Get these ones off. So guys, we're now in the arches. Uh, we're going to be looking for all of these plastic poppers situated around the arch. So if we look like that. And that, mine are a bit rubbed, where mine's low. I mean, that one's, you know, non-existent anymore. But yeah, you want to remove all of these so they're all around the inside of the arch. Then underneath here, you want to use the same T15 to whack off all the screws along the front here. I'll just jump down and show you. So you see here, and you'll see them all dotted about. They've got the body colour tabs look under there. So you want to get all of those nice fucking So guys, leave this one in here, just enough here. As you can see to pull the arch down there's a couple of um t15s under here as you run along the underside of the car but there we are get this back same on the other side access the rear of the bumper and we're almost there so guys it's a bit hard to see but in here is the metal arch you'll see there's like a black tab here i'm going to try and direct the camera over so we're going literally to here look and there is the nut which i think is a 10 mil so once you take a look let's pull these flaps up like so and then you want to get a flathead in behind this gap um, pushing these tabs down here now what you do is you'll soon have a gap form along here and you can just stab in and go and pull this out so it's then sat 
on the top. So once the top's loosened, and you've got the nut inside here, it's just a very hard pull now. I feel like the, the end of it here is not coming off. So you want to sort of get your hand in behind here and push out like that. So drop that. So now the bumper's loose, you want to unplug the fog. So before you remove the bumper, before you remove it, this side of the bumper, um, you do need to remove this plug, which is for your parking sensors and bits like that. Then the bumper can come off. So now remove your bumper. Right, so the first we're doing is we're going to get the inner cooler out to test fitment. So no judging the horrendously cable tied. It's very functional, but it doesn't look very good. Uh, this is version one, in practice. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove your standard airbox intake, wherever you have. We're going to use a 8mm socket to remove this pipe and the bottom pipe. Now we're going to get the intercooler and the stock air intake pipe out so we can get our custom pipe in already set up to make sure that the rest of the system is going to work. So I'm removing the stock air intake as I don't need it. Um, so it's a 10mm here and a 10mm there. You can probably get that from below or from above, just these two. That will come out, but it all comes out underneath. So I'll show you a video in just a minute with this coming out. So we loosen the two 10 mils. It's now loose. We're going to come around here. You see the intake runs up through here. Underneath there, we're going to push out of this holder and pull it out through. So once you've removed the air intake, it is uh, two 7 mil uh, little nuts on the Jubilee clips, or 7 mil Jubilee clips, top and bottom of the intercooler. I'm going to pull those pipes free, and then I'm going to get the intercooler loose. Alright then guys, so the intercooler pipes are loose, top and bottom. And we're now trying to do this without having to remove the headlights and the front uh, scut panel. Um, so what we have done for this gap here, as you can see, through there, is we pull this bit of trim back here. So it's, sorry, it's really hard to show you guys. We have pulled this bit of trim back up here that's in front of the top of the intercooler. At the top of the intercooler at the top there is a bolt which is a T... 25. 25. So you can loosen that, and then you'll see here it's mounted there. This will then allow the intercooler to come back so you can then unstart it out of the gap. So, guys, the intercooler is now off, and there is the size difference. Now, this intercooler is slightly thinner. That's not a problem. It needs to be thinner so it fits between the gap we've got left. Um, but it is much larger. You can see it is well over double the size, the surface area of the stock intercooler guys cable tie your intercooler to your crash bar and get it situated so we want both the outlets on this side now on the intercooler the outlets are slightly raised on one side we're now going to be drilling holes in here through into here and then this is going to clamp together so starting from the top you're going to put your first metal coupler in here you're then going to run a 90 bend in here like this that's going to connect to another coupler then to a 90 bend and then we're going to go straight into the intercooler from there. Now your bottom hose is slightly different. So we're going to use a coupler on the bottom of the hose here. We're then going to cut the 90 bend as far up as we can. As you can see this 90 bend will normally be like here. We've cut it right to the corner because of the overhang here. It will end up hitting here. So you want to cut this right off here, so literally on the edge of the 90 bend, then use the 90 bend to go inside there. Now you can't see it too well, but then in the bottom of there, you can probably just see down there in the corner, that the shorter 90 bend goes into a coupler, then the coupler goes straight onto the intercooler, and that is your intercooler setup. So all you've got to do is basically cut one of the 90 pipes or one of the ends of the 90 pipes down to reduce it because just due to the length of this now what you would also want to do which i put in there is optional and as you can see this pipe is under a bit of stretch what you would ideally want to do in the real world to resolve this in intercooler setup properly is to put a 90 bend here a coupler and then a 120 bend into here and that would remove this stock pipe allowing for better airflow because it's definitely getting a bit nabbed up in the corners there it's a bit running a bit tight now that's the reason why i've got this um cable tie here for the moment is to pull this hose away from the back of the radiator because it's been rubbing on the back of the radiator look and you don't want to be rubbing a boost hose through or rubbing through onto your radiator so what i will say is it does work with this i've had to use a cable tie to pull it slightly out of the way but it's worth upgrading by doing the the 120 and the 90 bend in order to relieve that problem of it hitting against the inside of the radiator. But there it is, all run through. 
and you can see front you can see through the front grille it looks tremendous there it is top and bottom and now air is going straight through here literally straight through here straight out into the intake so guys it is that simple to do and it is that efficient and effective to this engine this is then going to be clamped down like so and this will form our base and we're drilling holes all the way through cable tie through each round underneath to hold this we get all of your cable ties situated so you're ready to wrap them around the whole length when done so we are fitting four washers per nut on the crash bar you want to get all four off the one is hidden up underneath here these are a 13 mil and the other one is up inside there so we've used two washers to push the crash bar out we're going to bolt it back in place and then adjust the intercooler to suit you want to get your nuts and bolts and fire them up through the side of the cooler to hold it in place i've used cable ties to strap it onto them like that there it is all done so that is how it looks from the top pipe it is absolutely perfect so the bottom pipe will need a 120 bend and a 90 bend to get proper flow because it's quite tight this pipe so this intercooler installment along with a cold air intake sat around this area has been noted to have an increase of performance of around 5 to 10 bhp depending on what remap and things you put on it on top of your remap so this is really the best setup that you can really get for this engine it is very cheap to install it's very direct of course you want to fit it your own way and give yourself a peace of mind rather than having cable ties everywhere i've still got to sort this out as well but i'm just showing you guys what you can do on a basic budget to make work so yeah my car is held together by cable ties but it's functional and it works so i don't really care but guys that is the intercooler set up there that you need to do you need to get it on your car so i'm going to jump in my car now and give you an update as to where it is now so guys the intercooler is installed and here is the finishing look you can see it nice and prominently there through the front screen you can see it lovely and prominently there through the front grille it looks amazing coming through the front grille on the front of the car there like that so yeah guys get the intercooler on there because i tell you what this car drives a hell of a lot better with it not only is it better for your performance it's better for your mpg as well uh it looks literally everything now obviously what you do need to do is make sure you get this mapped accordingly to the intercooler and other bits to really get the most out of it but even just sticking it on the car as it is stock you can definitely feel in those warmer temperatures that the car is definitely pulling more freely and goes through the rev range very well it's really needed if you want to run decent power and have decent efficiency out of your 136 hdi all right guys, so the intercooler setup with cable ties and a few bolts does indeed work and is indeed reliable. So I had that fitted on the RCZ when I had one a while ago and it was absolutely fine. Um, and I have done a probably over 200 miles since installing it. Now, what have I noticed? What you will need to do to benefit from the intercooler is you will need to get a tune on the vehicle to really tune it up for that intercooler because what you're going to find now is which i have found on the car now is there is a slight more initial lag now that's obvious of course lewis because what have you done you have lengthened the pipe length or the travel distance of the air from the uh, <coughs> from the turbo to the engine so naturally it is going to be a bit laggy but what you've got in return for that slight lag and i'm talking it's not like a noticeable lag it's just it picks up a little bit slower what you have gained from that is this and that is that you have gained an immeasurable amount of mid-range pull now what i have noticed is two things uh, it's obviously what the intercooler is going to do first of all once you hit boost it builds up a little slower but once you hit it it pulls a lot smoother and a lot more thoroughly through that range and secondly Obviously, what you're going to notice as well is now the weather's getting warmer, you're going to notice that it's keeping your intake temperatures cooler, and and thus because of that, you've actually got increased performance in warmer weather, which is obviously very important through your summer and things. You don't want to be losing power. 